morning, LBC discipleship groups. We're so thankful that you're back for another week of our doctrinal focus. And uh, we're looking at the doctrine and the study um, of love as, as we look at the characteristics. And so hopefully you have your sheet there in front of you. And just a quick way of review, um, we wanted to look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And as uh, we looked at last week, Paul begins this chapter on love by emphasizing the importance of love. Uh, Paul says that anything done without love equals nothing. And uh, he gives six examples in verses 1 through 3 of that truth. And so Paul's definition here in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 through 7, gives us uh, the most precise definition of love in all of scriptures and probably in all of the world as well. So as I think about that, what you find here in verses, uh, the first four verses here, um, are 15 different characteristics of the qualities of love from verses 4 through 7 in those four verses there. Paul does not describe it with adjectives, does he? He describes it with verbs. And uh, Paul's point in this is that love is not simply a feeling. It's not something that we feel. But love is a choice. Love is a choice, and we have to choose to do that. So let's look at the qualities of love today, and we're just going to look at the first three today on our doctrinal focus. And so the first one we come across as we look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4, it says, Charity, or love, suffereth long, and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. And so the first point today is that love is patient. Love is patient, uh, or that love is long-suffering. And so the meaning of this, it comes from a a Greek word that means it's long-tempered. It is used throughout the New Testament almost always in reference uh, to being patient with people rather than circumstances or events. And this is the total opposite of seeking retaliation or getting even with some, or against someone and wanting to settle the score. And so what does the Bible teach about retaliation? Does the Bible have anything to say about it? And absolutely it does. The verse that I would like to focus in on is Matthew chapter 5, verse 44. It says, But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. And that's tough, isn't it? Um, It's tough to do uh, right and be patient to those who have done wrong to us, but that's what the scripture tells us to. We're not to retaliate. Uh, What does uh, God show, or how does God show patient love in the following verse? 2 Peter 3, 9 tells us that the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering toward us, to, uh, toward us, word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So God is, is long suffering. He's patient towards us. And so we are to do that as well. So some self examination. Are you patient with people uh, when they inconvenience you, or maybe perhaps even take advantage of you or wrong you? Are you patient towards them? Do you seek revenge for wrongs? that have been done to you? How does your patience towards others reflect um, how God has been patient with you? You know, oftentimes uh, God has been way more patient with us than what we are with others. And uh, I know that's the case in my own life as well. Uh, At times I I get short-tempered and uh, impatient, uh, but I have to remember how God has been long-suffering and patient towards me. And so in a marriage, is is patience needed in a marriage? And absolutely, patience is needed in in any relationship, but especially in marriages, um, in our homes, with our kids. Um, How patient are you with your spouse when they upset you? Would would your spouse say that you're patient with them um, as they make mistakes? Do you show an attitude of revenge? Uh, when you, when they upset you, or um, show a Christ, or do you show a Christ-like patience towards them, um, even though that maybe you've been wronged in that? And to love your spouse means to be patient with their faults. Love is patient and seeks to benefit uh, seeks the benefit of others, while 
self-love seeks revenge and to satisfy its own desires. Um, is patience needed in the church? Think about that. In, in our church, is patience needed? And absolutely it is. Um, and, and think about this. The church isn't made up of perfect people. I've already ruined that. I'm here. Um, I've ruined that, that perfect streak. And uh, sorry for that. But um, all kidding aside, if patience, if, if everybody was perfect, patience wouldn't be needed. And we need to love one another with a patient love, as Ephesians chapter 4, verse uh, 1 through 3 tells us. And I think of 1 Thessalonians 5.14. And 1 Thessalonians 5.14 tells us, Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. So we're to be patient towards all men. And that's essential in the church. And uh, we need to be patient towards, uh, towards one another. And so as we wrap up this, this thing on um, patience, just do you desire God, uh, God to be patient with your sins and my sins or our sins and failures? Should we not also be patient with others uh, when, uh, you ha- when um, you've uh, been wronged or um, that maybe it has been slighted? And absolutely, we're, we're called to be patient towards them. So not only is love patient, but love is kind as well. And so when I think of this, the meaning is that patience is taking anything from someone, whereas kindness is giving. It is giving anything to them. Uh, Kindness is the counterpart to patience. Uh, Patience is kind of taking anything from them, like I said, and, and, and kindness is giving anything to them. Uh, To be kind means that you seek to be useful to others, um, uh, to serve others, and be gracious towards them. And so are you and I generous towards other people? Kindness in the home. Is kindness in the home uh, important? And absolutely, kindness in the home is important. And it's important in marriages, isn't it? Uh, When your spouse has a need, do you seek to meet uh, that need in their life? And uh, there's, there's some things as I think about that. If, you're a wi- if your wife has a need as the husband of that home, do you seek to fill that need? Um, if your husband has a need, do you as the wife seek to fill that need? And so what is the opposite of kindness? And that's being harsh. And times we can be harsh towards others. Um, and it's sad um, when I think of this that... Uh, when people can show more kindness to those outside their home than, and, and be so harsh to their spouse or to their kids. And uh, in the home, that, that should be the one area that, that kindness is overflowing. Um, and, and it should be overflowing everywhere. But kindness in our, in our homes uh, needs to be there. It needs to be essential. We need to be there um, and, and be kind to our spouse, be kind to our kids. Ephesians 5.28, guys, tells us this. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife also loveth himself. And then of the virtuous woman in Proverbs chapter 31, verse 26, it tells us, She openeth her mouth in wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. So in marriage... Which do you respond to better if your spouse wants uh, to change in some area of your life? When they are harsh with you or when they are kind to you? Which accomplishes more? It's an old adage, what what attracts better, honey or vinegar? And uh, obviously we all respond better to kindness than harshness. And so we have to, to practice that. We have to implement that in our lives Uh, What about kindness in the church? How important is kindness in the church? It it is of utmost importance that that kindness finds its way in the church. And I'm so thankful for the love that is here at Lighthouse Baptist Church and uh, that that we're patient with one another and we show kindness to one another. And And I've heard even people in our congregation say that I have found more kindness at this church than anywhere else in the world. And that's a testament Uh, to the Spirit working within us, and uh, may that continue on, and may we demonstrate that daily in our walk uh, as we continue to grow 
um, and be sanctified. Uh, this, think about this, the opportunities for kindness. Imagine what would happen if there was an outbreak of kindness in the world. And if all of us and everyone in the world started doing a random act of kindness on a daily basis, it would be transformative, wouldn't it? Um, how would your home change? Just think about this for a moment. How would your home change if every day you did some random act of kindness for your spouse or for your kids? I think that would start to overflow. Uh, not that you would just only be the one doing it, but as that began to take root every day, then you would see it transform your spouse, your kids, and then you would start to see them do random acts of kindness as well. What kind? Uh, what did God's kindness look like towards us? Think about that for a moment. What did God's kindness look like towards us? And I think of uh, Titus chapter 3, verse 4 through 6, and it says, But after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior, toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of the regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Christ Jesus, our Savior. And so not only is love patient and love is kind, but the third thing we want to look at today is that love is not jealous. It envieth not, it tells us there in verse 4. And this is uh, the first of eight negative descriptions of love, of what love is not. And so love is not jealous, or it envieth not. And so the meaning of this is, it comes from a root word, to have a strong desire. Um, it is the term from which we get zeal. Um, it is used both favorably and unfavorably in the scriptures. Um, there is a right kind of godly jealousy, the scriptures tells us, that has a zeal for God and his glory. Reminds me of Exodus chapter 34, verse 14. For thou shalt worship no other god. For the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous God. Um, that is the right kind of jealousy there. Um, there is a wrong kind of jealousy as well. And that's what's referred to here in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, uh, verse 4, as a wrong kind of jealousy. And uh, there's two forms of this wrong type of jealousy. The first form is that it says that I want what someone else has. Um, have you ever experienced that in your heart? Maybe uh, you, you've seen someone, they, they've got the new car or, or the big home, and um, inside your heart you get jealous for what they have. Uh, maybe it's a relationship uh, that they have with their spouse or their kids. Uh, maybe it's a position on a team or a, in, a, in a work environment. You get jealous of that. Um, that's one form of this type of jealousy. The second kind is a worse kind of jealousy. It, it, it not only says that I want what they have, but then it goes on to say that I don't even want them to have it. That's, that's another level of jealousy. Um, and this simply is just uh, the fruit of a loveless life. Um, and I'll say that again. That's simply just a fruit of a loveless life. Uh, so what are some examples uh, of people in the Bible who struggle with jealousy. Are there any examples in the scriptures of people struggling with jealousy? And there's some clear examples. Think of Cain and Abel. In the very first book of the Bible, Genesis chapter 4, Cain and Abel. And why did Cain kill Abel? It was out of jealousy, right? God accepted Abel's offering and he rejected Cain's and Cain became jealous of that. Think about Joseph. Why did his brother sell him into slavery? Uh, they became jealous because of his father Jacob uh, making a coat of many colors for him, and, and they sell him into slavery. They were very jealous of him. There's some, several others as far as like King Saul and David. I think of the prodigal son and the older brother. And so in the scriptures, there are many times that we see that there are examples of jealousy. Was Jesus ever jealous that's a good question to ask, isn't it? Was Jesus ever jealous or envious and desires, desires of others or what others had? And the simple answer is no. He was never jealous. He was never envious. Uh, and so we all physically have more speaking than Jesus ever had. Yet he was never envious. He never envied. And so jealous people show that they have a lack of love uh, for others. 
So today, let's, let's wrap it up and taking it home. Love is the most important thing. We've talked about that um, in the believer's life. Without love, all we do is meaningless if we don't have love according to God's word. And so we must remember that love is not a feeling, but it's a choice. And this week, let's show this love in, in three ways I would encourage you. Be patient with others. Examine how patient you are with your spouse, your kids, um, and those in your life. And uh, times it'll, it'll get a little rough, and sometimes we're not as patient as we should be. Uh, sometimes when we get hangry and things like that, right? Uh, but let's, let's take a look at uh, this week and examine, are we being patient with others? Secondly, be kind to others. Seek to do a random act of kindness this week daily to those in your life. Seek to meet the needs of those that are in your life as well. And then lastly, do not be jealous of others. Examine your heart for any jealousy or covetousness towards what others have. And if you have any jealousy that you notice, ask for forgiveness. And choose to be thankful for the blessings that you do have. And uh, it, it's just a, an amazing thing and when we, we start to apply God's word to our lives and how it transforms us. And so um, hopefully this study has been uh, well uh, with you this week, and, and hopefully you can take it and apply it. And just want to thank you uh, for tuning in to our doctrinal focus. Thank you, and have a great day. Look forward to seeing you next week. God bless.